All right, Dan, back with another video. Aaron's joining me again today, and we're continuing our video on the armed forces of Germany today, looking at East Germany, which was formed uh, in its own government in 1949. Uh, Germany was split in two at the end of World War II between the Allies in the West and the Soviets in the East, and... It existed that way until 1990, until the two countries were uh, reunited. If you look at this uh, uniform, you might think it looks a lot like a World War II German uniform. And that would be because the East Germans, when they formed their military, uh, you know, weren't particularly enthused about modeling themselves after their Soviet occupiers. So they tried to preserve a lot of the Prussian traditions in the German military. So... Uh, the training, uniforms, and traditions uh, were all very similar to that of the World War II era of Wehrmacht. And I'll let Cavill go from here and talk a little bit about this uniform. Yeah, this is part of the Stasi Regiment. Um, the Stasi were similar to the KGB in East Germany. They worked hand-in-hand -hand with them. Um, espionage, internal security, that was their main thing. Um, we can see this as the Bacht Regiment F. Draczynski collar uh, um, tab there. Um, this is the rank of a private. The way we can tell that is epaulets here are plain. You do have a burgundy stripe that, that's for the Stasi. Also, you'll see burgundy here and here. Um, we have a military sports badge that only came in one class, which was a gold collar. This is a shooting proficiency lanyard. Um, this shows that it was an infantry style. That was the majority of what was issued to them. Um, now, these units were responsible for guarding the Stasi and state buildings. Uh, that was the primary job of the uh, Wacht Regiment to do that. Um, and they, they went into, you'll see different ranks and different things, but this is just your basic infantry soldier. He would just be a sentry there. Okay. Yeah, looking at this, I can say this looks very similar to, like, a wartime infantry assault badge. Very. And so you can see some of that tradition. And then, obviously, the uh, the um, the cuff ribbon, that's very mm -hmm. traditional German, right. and as well as the collar tab. So, I mean, very much similar to uh, the wartime uniforms. Um, in the background, I think we have an original... Uh, East German flag from Aaron's collection, um, which is, is pretty neat to see. Uh, and in the backdrop, we have a, a Zeltbahn, which is just a German field tent, and the rain camo. I believe this camo was actually developed during World War II and then you instituted in the East German Army in uh, the 60s, and it remained standard to the, the end of the war. Um, so from there... I'll let Cab will talk about uh, maybe some of these awards we have from the East German military. Okay, we'll basically go over a few of them because literally we could spend days going over the awards alone. Um, here's one which I'll share. That is the Patriotic Order of Merit. It was a higher ranking order. It came in three classes, bronze, silver, and gold. This is the bronze. Um, this is an earlier strike, probably from the 60s or 70s. The reverse of it. This is the ribbon bar that would have been worn on the uniform. And this was given out for a high level of merit or achievement in their military. It could be issued to the Army, Navy, Air Force, or the Stasi. Um, it did have a higher grade, the fourth grade basically, which was a gold medal here. But they replaced this clasp with one that had a wreath with diamonds on it. Um, and that was primarily issued to high-ranking officials and generals. Okay. And I think we could probably to point out, uh, for some people, the East German military never did see any combat, direct combat. No. No. Uh, uh, thankfully, Cold War tensions never rose to that point, but um, I'll let you continue. Yeah, I mean, most of their awards were for merit. Uh, they did make some combat medals, um, like the Blücher Order, but it was never issued. They were manufactured, and most of them actually ended up in a safe in Dresden, um, which you can actually go to the Dresden Imperial War Museum and see that safe. All those medals are still there today. 
Um, but I'll go over a few others here. Um, this is the Combat Order of Merit. They came in three classes as well. Gold, silver. And this is a bar with the bronze. And those, again, were a merit medal for high-ranking achievements. Mm -hmm. uh, they, it's an odd medal because they could be given out in combat times. The only difference between a non-combat and combat version were the color of the ribbon. These are merit, so they have brown stripes. Combat would have red stripes on the orange. Okay, yeah, very interesting. Only difference. They did manufacture the combats, but they were never issued. All right. And we also have um, some more that we could go over. There's literally hundreds of different medals here. Um, this is a 20-year service medal. And that you got on your 20th anniversary for being in the military forces. They also made a 15, um, 10, 5, and so on. Um, here is one of their banners of labor. Made them in three classes as well. The only difference between the classes are this little clasp at the top that say 1, 2, or 3 in, nom in uh, Roman numerals. Okay. But they're identical otherwise. Um, let's see what else we have. We have some merit medals. Uh, these are just national merit medals. Excuse me, I'm going to move some of this around. Oh, yeah, here. okay. Yep. There's a gold, silver, and the bronze. I don't know if we can see that real well. Oh, yep, we're good. But uh, those now, those you would see your average soldier to your lower rank of officer would generally get awarded those for merit. Um, fulfilling their jobs to excellence. We also have, these are an interesting one here. Uh, these are Brotherhood Medals. Okay. These were given out for strengthening the relations between the Warsaw Pact countries. Oh, okay. And actually, if you look at that, you can kind of see, it looks like there's a East German soldier on there. On the, I think on the left, mm -hmm. you can see that classic. And a Russian. And a Russian there, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. And those could be awarded to Warsaw Pact members as well as East Germans as well. All right. But that's a few of the medals there. Okay. Well, why we, this, since we don't have a, we don't have, unfortunately, a East German Stahlhelm here, but you can kind of get an idea of the shape by looking at this medal. And the East German uh, helmet... Um, look one up if you'd like, uh, was patterned after an experimental World War II design that the Wehrmacht never utilized, uh, but it turned out to be a quite effective helmet if you ever look at ballistic tests done on it. And um, a, a lot of the equipment used by the uh, East German military was either left over from World War II or newly manufactured in almost identical way. Even look at the, we have a canteen here. Very similar in design to the wartime canteen, although this one is plastic. A lot cheaper manufacturer. Oh, yeah, for sure. If you, if I can get it open here. East Germany, in general, was a very poor country. Yes, unfortunately. I mean, socialism generally didn't work out for any of the Warsaw Pact countries. And East Germany, Czechoslovakia, they weren't very enthused about accepting their Soviet rule. I mean, this is kind of a, it's very tinny in comparison to a World War II one. Stamped aluminum. And if you look at this quality, this plastic, it almost looks like plastic, like a kid's toy would be made from. And I assume this is probably an 80s production, but it's very, it's just very cheap plastic. So you can kind of see a low quality. I can't imagine in combat, this would have held up for too long. I imagine if you fell on this, it would probably break, so... Um, but the last thing we'll take a look at, we're not going to open it, um, but is an East German iron ration. And I can't translate that, but I don't know if you can, Aaron. Oh, let's see. Um, it's just basically where it's been packaged at. Okay, so um, just a packaging stamp. Yeah, and it, it has some some tablets in there, some iron ration tablets. Yes, and that is what's in these. They're just they're just food like compressed food bars um like you might find it in a u.s uh 
general purpose emergency ration. So there is, uh, if you check out Old Smokey's channel, he does open one of these and eat it. But this was manufactured in 9 of 90, so September of 1990. So this was probably one of the last rations made before the two countries unified in October of 1990. Um, so it's pretty basic, but it keeps with that tradition going back to World War II with the issue of iron rations for emergencies, and I believe their military otherwise did operate on the premise of using field kitchens. And they did have a larger field ration uh, that uh, is pretty hard to find even pictures of. Unfortunately, I don't have an example on here to, to show you. But uh, hopefully that will spark your interest and in maybe looking up some more uh, information on East German military and some other channels to check out. I said Old Smokey uh, and Mark Felton Productions have some excellent videos. And please, if you liked our video, subscribe and thank you for watching. Thank you.